Hey there gang, what am I doing in the shop today? Well I'm putting a bunch of coats of lacquer on a broken headstock which will eventually show up on video. The other thing I'm doing is fixing this old baritone ukulele. Now this is ostensibly a K, but I was just checking out that label in there and that seems to be a photocopy that was cut out with scissors so I don't know if it's legit or not. But regardless it seems to be pretty old. Uh, it's got lots of crackle in the finish and it just gives me the impression of something made in the 50s or 60s. Now I don't know for certain, but I think this thing probably took a pretty good fall at some point because the back is separated from the lining all the way around the lower bout. And there's also a seam separation between the soundboard and the tail block up here. So there's going to be a lot of gluing to do. Other than that, it seems like it's in pretty good shape. I don't see a whole lot of baritone ukes in my day-to-day -day life. They can be kind of tricky to fix actually, because a lot of the tools you would use on a full-size guitar tend to be too big, but the smaller tools tend to be too small. And then you've got this sound hole here you can't fit your hand in, but everything's too far away to reach with your fingers. So it gets really tricky if you want to, say, install a, a pickup or something. Um, or even just re-gluing a loose bridge, because your clamps are never the right length. Oh, well, that's cool. I'm just looking at this. The sound hole decoration here is wildly off-center. It's about three millimeters away from the sound hole on this side and about six up here. That's fun when that happens. So having a look at the seam separation here, you can see that this binding is actually painted on and there is a brace that they uh, pushed all the way through the side here. They cut the notch right through and you can see that it actually forms part of the side. That's kind of interesting. It's the same on the other side here. And that brace seems to be loose from the back for a portion of its length, so we're going to have to glue that up as well. Things are characteristically dirty. The lining in this um, instrument, it's a single piece of what looks like aircraft birch plywood or something, like a bendable birch. It's quite narrow. It's only about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. So there's not a whole lot of support. It, there doesn't need to be actually in an instrument this size, but it's more like a classical guitar in that regard. So how are we going to handle this? The main thing is to see if the outline kind of wants to line up again. It's not easy. Sometimes there's going to be a little overhang. Depending on how long this thing is sat open, um, things can move at different rates. So I know I'm going to have to worry about this, this portion down here. Sometimes it's easy to get the tail block glued down first and then try to force things back, you know, inch by inch. Sometimes it's impossible to do the glue up all at one time. Just having a glimpse down inside here, checking out the glue squeeze out. It's very white in color. Um, I don't even think that's regular white glue. It's too white for that. And it's not the hide glue I might have expected to find. Um, there was that period in the 60s where a lot of manufacturers were moving away from the traditional glues, trying out all kinds of new chemical ones. Um, the adhesive industry went crazy there for a while. Some of those did not last very long before everyone kind of settled down and realized that the polyvinyl aliphatic glues were the way to go. But not knowing what that is, I want to make sure the glue joints are good and clean before I try to put something new on top of it. Just using some sandpaper here to clean off any old glue, get rid of any oxidation, atmospheric contaminants or anything that's on those two surfaces that I want to glue together get them clean. Well that was a first. I just decided to wipe off the board here. I'm going to do a little work on the frets and every single one of the dot markers on here just went into tiny little particles. They flew away. It's almost like gold leaf, you know, how you need to brush off gold leaf. I guess they're just decals. And this board I don't think is actually wood. It's um, probably a solid surface material like formica or something. And these frets appear to be brass or some kind of brass alloy. okay, it's a nylon stringed instrument. 
Having managed to disintegrate his fingerboard markers with a wave of my hand, I think I should probably give him some free side dot markers. Just age those with a little bit of marker. I returned my attention to the back crack and glued that up in the same manner as the top. Thinking about it, I realized that it would gnaw at me, so I decided to replace those missing fingerboard markers, and it gave me the opportunity to try something I've never done before, but which has been in the back of my mind for a while. I've used a quarter inch plug cutter to make them out of wood and uh, plastic several times in the past, but I wanted to see whether I could do the same thing with bone. So I got myself a saddle blank here, and um, obviously the feed rate has to be pretty slow and delicate, and you have to give it some opportunity to cool down every once in a while, otherwise you might crack it, but it worked just fine. This being a solid surface for mica material, I decided I wanted to start my brad point bit backwards and let those spurs act as a kind of scoring knife, just until I got through that thin layer on the top, prevent any tear out, and then I could uh, reverse it and go forward and get the correct depth. Just a drop of glue in the hole, then I can make sure that it's flush with the top of the board and it's ready to go. The other thing I want to do before we put the strings on is have a cursory glance at the intonation here because it seemed a little sour before to me. To the 12th fret we have 243 millimeters. So we would expect the total string length to be about 486. Maybe there's a little bit of compensation added to that. Probably not. In this era for ukuleles they just didn't bother. Um, not in this price range anyway. But our total string length here to the front edge of the saddle where the strings take off is about 484. So we're missing about two millimeters there from total string length before compensation. Um, the saddle is actually leaning forward quite a ways. It's, it's quite a tall saddle and it's been shaped so the strings take off on the front edge. So I think what we can do is, hopefully this hasn't been glued in, I can just remove this, flip it around, and file it so that we've um, will gain an extra millimeter and a half or so and that should make us play a little bit better especially if you play up the board it looks like it was glued in using some of that same crusty white glue okay so that's all back together again we managed to retrieve about two millimeters worth of string length. Those dots look appropriate. I've got it strung with the top four strings from a classical set, which is basically what they sell you when you buy baritone ukulele strings. Works just the same. I'll try to make some noise with this thing, but these are again nylon strings and they haven't finished stretching yet, so it might go out of tune a little bit while I play. I'm sure you'll understand. <laughs> 